of Guillain-Barre syndrome. A 35-year-old man presents to the emergency department for progressive difficulty walking for one week. He has also noticed deep, achy lower back pain and numbness distally in the bilateral lower extremities over the same time span. He is otherwise in good health except for a recent diarrheal illness that resolved two weeks ago. His neurologic examination is notable for decreased strength and mildly reduced sensation to touch and pinprick in both lower extremities, as well as absent reflexes in the arms and legs. There is concern for Guillain-Barre syndrome. How will you make this diagnosis and what is the appropriate course of treatment? It is important to recognize Guillain-Barre syndrome, or GBS, so that appropriate treatment can be initiated promptly and patients can be monitored closely for serious and sometimes life-threatening complications. We will discuss the risk factors for GBS, available diagnostic tools, and management of this condition. Multiple different variants of GBS have been described, but there are a number of common features among them. GBS is a monophasic peripheral nervous system illness. It is immune-mediated and the pathophysiology often involves cross-reaction of similar epitopes between gangliosides and infectious agents, a process known as molecular mimicry. Risk factors for GBS include a preceding gastrointestinal or upper respiratory illness, typically a few weeks before symptom onset. Campylobacter jejuni, a bacteria causing gastroenteritis, is the most well-documented pathogen comprising up to 25% of cases. Viral infections are also associated with the development of GBS, including influenza, cytomegalovirus, HIV, and to a lesser extent, Epstein-Barr virus, COVID-19, and Zika virus. GBS is the most common cause of acute paralytic illness. The usual clinical presentation is characterized by progressive ascending weakness associated with hyporeflexia or areflexia and decreased tone. Weakness usually starts in the lower extremities symmetrically, but there are atypical presentations with more varied onset and distribution. Subtle sensory deficits follow the same ascending pattern, and gait disturbance from a combination of sensory ataxia and leg weakness occurs. Other clinical findings may include facial, ocular, or oropharyngeal weakness. Dysautonomia and involvement of respiratory muscles can cause life-threatening complications, and patients may require monitoring in an ICU setting, especially when there is concern for impending respiratory failure. It is important to distinguish GBS from other similar presentations of progressive flaccid muscle weakness. Depending on the clinical context, the differential diagnosis could include acute myelopathy, for example, compressive, ischemic, or inflammatory, as in cases of transverse myelitis, botulism, acute inflammatory myopathies, tick paralysis, critical illness neuropathy or myopathy, CIDP, or vasculitis. Several diagnostic studies are helpful in confirming the diagnosis of GBS. Lumbar puncture will show albuminocytologic dissociation, which means increased CSF protein but normal cell count. Nerve conduction studies and electromyography can also be helpful in establishing the diagnosis and distinguishing between axonal and demyelinating subtypes of GBS. Spinal MRI can help assess for some mimics of the disease and may show enhancement of the nerve roots within the cauda equina in cases of GBS. Recognizing the clinical features of GBS and ordering the appropriate diagnostic tests leads to faster initiation of treatment, which improves recovery and may lessen long-term disability. Acute treatment of GBS uses immunotherapy with either IV immunoglobulin, IVIG, or plasma exchange. These treatments are equally effective, but IVIG is used more frequently in practice due to ease of administration. Supportive treatment includes management of neuropathic pain and dysautonomia, as well as ventilatory and nutritional support. Rehab therapy aids in recovery, which may take weeks to months. Some patients experience incomplete recovery with residual neurologic symptoms. The patient in our case displays key features of GBS, including areflexia and loss of motor strength most prominent in the lower extremities following a diarrheal illness. He was treated with a course of IVIG followed by regular physical therapy, resulting in gradual neurologic recovery over the next few months. Recovery over the next few.